What's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Friday, end of the week, March 18th, 2022. It's about uh, 10, 12 a.m. California time. A latest quake out there on the globe shows a 2.2 earthquake just coming in to the Puerto Rico area right there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's go ahead and check out these uh, conditions out here, earthquake conditions, kind of picking up a little bit out here along the west coast and also here on the USGS map showing a 2.6 coming into the area of Oregon up here um, near Lacombe, Oregon. Haven't seen too much earthquake activity up here recently. It is situated in the Cascades, not around any volcanoes that I can see here. Uh, there's, of course, lots of mountains up there, right? The Cascades. Uh, this 2.6 coming in pretty deep though at 12.1 kilometers uh, below the surface there. Low activity at Mount Hood as well. Uh, this earthquake occurring uh, about an hour or so ago. Got a little swarm of movement here at the southern end of Mount Hood. Looking at nine earthquakes all roughly within about, uh, about the same time of each other or a couple hours uh, from each other. So far, the largest, a, uh, a 1.7, and there was a couple of them, a couple 1.7s there. Uh, all the other ones a little bit smaller, but uh, still a little, little swarming activity occurring there, about four to five kilometers below the surface, right where we would, we would expect to see volcanic activity. I want to pull up the um, PNSN network. By the way, this is tremor activity from last night, 80 epicenters up there, uh, just northwest of Seattle. So we're going to go to volcanic uh, seismicity map here from the pnsn.org network slash trimmer for Mount Hood. And we can hopefully, these seismograph stations are online. Um, just kind of fishy last night with the uh, pulling of the data. Uh, and then as soon as I get, as soon as I call that out, my, my stream goes down at four in the morning. It's just when people are sleeping, right? I'm not up at four in the morning. Uh, so yeah, there's that little swarm of activity here. We're going to check out this uh, closest seismograph station, the Three Component Broadband Timberline, Oregon. Uh, it's a BHZ channel. We'll see if these folks are uh, accurately predicting or accurately uh, uh, giving us the information there. Let's see here. With the last couple hours, here's, here's those 1.7s. So there's three of them and some smaller quakes in there as well very small um but yeah it looks like they're actually reporting them let me check the previous day see what we got here uh prior to that not for sure what all this activity here is but as uh, far as general seismic activity it looks pretty accurate when it comes to uh, the reporting of the quakes there surprisingly a lot of times they let those microquakes slide and don't even report them there on the map but uh, usgs definitely showing the nine earthquakes on the uh on the Mount Hood little earthquake swarm. Uh, Mount St. Helens, kind of want to see if these guys are back yet with the uh, data that's uh, missing in action. Uh, let's check out Volcanic here. Mount St. Helens up here. <clears throat> we'll see what's going on. Of course, no swarm being reported. Um, kind of hard to report a swarm if there's no data coming in, right? Let's see if they've... Uh, picked it up yet or not no they haven't see this is kind of see it's still missing that data cut off here uh this is almost two days ago now started getting some seismic activity and then ba bam it's missing in action and um image not found for the latest seismograph we already went through this last night in various stations around the uh, St. Helens area, Mount St. Helens area, and they all say the same thing. So no data coming in, therefore image not found. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that. I'm just kind of wondering what's going on with that. Uh, Yellowstone activity was kicking up a little bit last night as well into the Lake Yellowstone region. Um, so far, these folks are reporting about 11 earthquakes. The largest one so far, 2.2 .2, uh, in this cluster of quakes. The Yellowstone overview here of Yellowstone National Park shows that activity from last night kicking up there. It really kind of died down a little bit after midnight and uh, been slowly kicking back up here uh, throughout the morning. 
So it's still definitely an ongoing swarm. These are very small microquakes and uh, localized to the vicinity of the borehole area. That's about the closest station there. Picking up the, uh, the extremely small microquakes. When you get further away, those uh, little quakes don't really necessarily show up on any of the uh, other seismograph stations, but they're definitely there. So uh, an ongoing swarm uh, continues there around the uh, Yellowstone Lake. Let's check out uh, the activity out here. Uh, rest of the Pacific Northwest, some movement up here outside of uh, Mount Rainier as well. West uh, 0.3 at uh, 6, 6.7 kilometers below the surface. And also some activity really ramping up here uh, last night into the Walker, California area, just west of the Antelope Valley region. This area has uh, um, has been kind of quiet here in the past couple days. It has been swarming uh, prior to that, uh, technically the past few months in this region, actually the past year or so, I've seen quite a bit of swarming in this area, but uh, had a little quiet spell and it all kind of kicked off last night uh, with a 4.0 and uh, a bunch of little aftershocks there. So a little buildup of pressure during that quiet time, uh, enough to release a 4.0 and subsequent uh, aftershock sequences. Kind of what I'm thinking is going on over here as well. Uh, it has been relatively quiet near the Tonopah, Nevada area. Uh, there's a couple of small microquakes, but I'm expecting something similar to what we're seeing over here in the um, Antelope Valley area. Uh, you know, just due to the quietness here, it takes a little time to build up some further pressure and then we get uh, either, either a three or four followed up by subsequent uh, uh, shallower aftershocks. And these are all aftershocks anyway in general from the uh, 6.0 that uh, struck there a couple years ago in that region. Uh, what, what else we got here? Some movement off of the San Andreas Fault Zone in the Diablo range. Uh, they've seen a 3.4 and a couple other smaller quakes there following that quake this morning. Uh, not for sure on the fault system there, Pine Rock Fault, and there's a couple other systems that run through here. Uh, sits about uh, a couple miles just to the east of the San Andreas Fault Zone. Also down here in the western side of the San Joaquin Valley, uh, just southeast of Kalinga, 2.2 and a little smaller quake, uh, 1.5. So a little uptick in areas in, uh, in California overnight uh, also Ridgecrest region seeing that uh, swarm of activity kick up look at the garlock fault some movement here straight across there uh, Tehachapi we got a 1.3 and a 1.6 right there on the garlock fault zone southern part of the state here on the Pacific side looks looks uh, somewhat quiet there's a little swarm of movement you can kinda see it up here on the south side of these mountains the San Gabriel Mountains um, just some microquakes stretching up across there, but no major swarms in this area of the state. Uh, activity throughout the Intermountain West, aside from a uh, little bit of movement up through the Cedar, Utah, and up into Wyoming. Activity just kind of uh, um, confined to Yellowstone and up here on the Sawtooth Fault Zone. Uh, the Grand Teton National Park here, seen a um, couple small microquakes, very shallow depths there. Uh, last night and some movement down here as well on the state line 2.1 at uh, 9.2 kilometers so a little little odd activity there in that region some movement down in Texas once again picking up here around the Pecos Texas area 3.1 and a 1.6 uh, the rest of the uh, state looks pretty quiet for now in earthquake terms had some uh, storms roll through Oklahoma and Texas and heading east today in this area but uh, next week's gonna or Monday is gonna be a start of a severe weather event 1.4 in uh, Tennessee on the New Madrid zone here's the activity here at the Puerto Rico region they seen a uh, 4.1 earlier that one's pretty close to the Puerto Rico trench uh, at 25 kilometers another little one here an older one uh, from yesterday 3.3.1 uh, so we're gonna watch this area around the Caribbean looks like we're starting to pick up activity uh, there's some activity off the coast of Costa Rica, 4.5 at 10 kilometers. And uh, South America looks generally quiet here. Just a couple small quakes on the Perucelli Trench. Uh, the rest of the world, the globe, or the flat map, however you want to view it. Uh, some movement over here on the center section of the Java Trench. 
course, we had that pretty big uh, 7.6 uh, there a few days ago now on the northern end. Just a couple of fours there around Java, Indonesia area. Uh, what do we got here in the Tonga region? Some activity up, uh, up and down the board, it looks like. Look at that earthquake right there, 616.6. I hate those numbers. I don't like them. They're definitely not uh, not uh, a good set of numbers. That's pretty deep, though. Nonetheless, 616 uh, kilometers. Look at this one, 555.5. What's up with all these coded numbers? <laughs> but either way, a lot of deep movement, folks, in the Fiji, uh, Fiji region um, this morning. So got to be on guard with that deep activity taking place. Uh, let's see, we checked out Yellowstone. The trimmer map from last night was relatively quiet. Um, looking at, kind of kind of want to go into the uh, weather department here real quick because I will be out there uh, Monday and Tuesday for the uh, severe weather event that's coming up here in parts of Texas, day four. Is looking pretty crazy there for severe weather. This 30% uh, chance of uh, severe weather outlook got issued a couple days ago, and it's kind of rare for the Storm Prediction Center to issue that type of uh, uh, warning that far out. And so far, with with uh, each update and each model that the uh, computers are forecasting, it still shows a uh, significant severe weather event for uh, parts of Texas over here. Tyler, Texas, just outside of the um, Dallas Fort Worth area Longview Brian uh, looks like Waco Texas is included in that as well uh, Dallas is in the 15% chance so this is um, a good you know good possibility we could see some uh, some long track violent tornadoes in this uh, area I'm, 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 I'm definitely gonna be out there chasing I, but I'm also gonna be safe at the same time definitely not gonna be driving into a tornado uh, the potential for a few tornadoes remains evident, along with hail and wind risk centered. Okay, that was uh, talking about the day uh, five, I believe. But uh, yeah, that's uh, let's see what we got here. Tomorrow, we'll be able to see the uh, tornado potential and hell risk hell risk <clears throat> if i can get that out here real quick um and and we'll get a little bit better view of uh of the potential of severe weather here on that day but man if you guys live out there in this region or if you're going to be out there stay weather aware and weather alert we will be live streaming i'm going to be live streaming uh the entire time out there pending service I know it is kind of wooded out there in eastern Texas, unfortunately, um, but uh, I will definitely be out there nonetheless uh, looking at that severe weather potential and uh, I'll be live streaming. So make sure you tune in for that for a little storm chasing. It is that time of year where I jump into the uh, uh, storm chasing mobile and uh, get that done, so to speak. So uh, let's see what else we got. Um, that's about it. Uh, we'll check out the solar weather map here real quick. Let's see if anything has changed up in this department. Things look pretty calm across the board right now. Very uh, low conditions here on the KP index down around one or below. The aurora looks very minimal at that. And sunspot activity, there's not a whole lot of sunspot potential. Geomagnetic forecast possible on the 20th. But uh, overall, nothing significant to report here from the solar weather activity. Uh, live stream is up, folks. Uh, update videos going to be heading up there right now onto the channel. Hope everyone has a good day. Stay safe out there. Make sure you subscribe if you like storm chasing, and uh, and uh, we try to we we try to mix that in here as well, because that's kind of my uh, that's kind of my um, my hobby. Aside from geology studies and uh, earthquake studies, I, uh, I jump right in the storm mix as well. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell while you're here so you can get notified when we go live on Monday. I'll probably do an update uh, in position out there before the storms fire up.
but nonetheless should be pretty fun and uh, i know it's a little crazy a lot of people ask me why do i like storm chasing it's so dangerous you know that's weird it's, i don't think it's weird i think it's exciting um you know you only live once not that i'm going to drive into a tornado but uh, and i hopefully any tornadoes that do form or touch down are not around any populated regions of course but uh the dynamics of weather and uh just in general, how, how it all works and forms is uh, it's, it's very entertaining to me uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, the, um, the supercell development and, and whatnot. So, but anyway, uh, enough blabbering. I can't wait. I am going to be pretty excited here. So, all right, guys, we will chat to you a little bit later. Stay safe out there. If the stream does go down, you can bet I have ways to bring it back up. So uh, it doesn't matter if I'm here at my house or out in Texas. The stream will come back up if it goes down. That's a promise. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe.